Good morning once again, and thank you for making the time to join today's session. I am Tendeli Shinjangase, Marketing Manager at EBSCO. Today's session is on Ultimate Databases. Before we start, um, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping um, items with you. Firstly, um, the session is recorded and all attendee lines are muted. If you do experience any challenges with um, maybe technical or we have questions for the speakers, please leave them in the chat box and we will address them at the end of the session. If it's technical, we will address it as soon as possible. Um, we also have a prize draw at the end of the session, so please stick around to find out if you're the winner. Without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to our speakers for the day. Um, Lebu? Thank you very much, Tembelike, and good morning, everybody. My name is Gilebukhile Kurai. I am the account executive from EBSCO side for the academic market. I'm not alone today. I'm with my colleague, Kobela, who recently joined our team last month. And with that being said, Kobela, once again, welcome. Thank you, Lebu. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kobela Kurai, and I'm the account executive at EBSCO. As Lemo mentioned, I'm really new in this position, but not really new at ESCO. I've been with ESCO in the customer service side for a couple of years. And in our presentation today, we will talk about the ultimate, and I hope you will enjoy our presentation. With that being said, Lemo, yes. tell us, what are ultimate? I think that's a very good question. Thank you very much, um, Gobela. So, what are ultimates? Now, ultimates are the ultimate databases are EBSCO's largest full text databases that include peer reviewed journals. And some of those journals are leading journals from that are used by international universities. And what is also quite nice about the ultimate databases is that the full text journal that is provided in there comes from international countries such as Europe, we're looking at Africa, we're looking at America as well. All right. Um, I think this is also quite a crucial um, point being that, you know, users get exposed to content that are used by your well famous university, such as your Harvard University, for example, with at the same time, they still experience a bit of African content that's also provided. So it allows them to have that exposure and enhancing their research experience to be quite, um, um, you know, smoothless. Within the ultimate databases as well, we have active open access journals. I think that's also quite important because with the world today, you know, open access content has become quite important. And, you know, having this content included in our ultimate databases is quite vital. And I must also express that, you know, each and every content that is aggregated into EBSCO um, databases is curated by our subject librarians purely to ensure that we include high quality content in our databases. So in overall, that I can say is the ultimate databases. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's how many do you have? Okay. All right. So now I invite everybody to sit back, let's relax and let it, let us explore the ultimate databases. So from EBSCO side, we have five um, ultimate databases. Namely, we've got the Academic Search Ultimate, we've got the Business Source Ultimate, we have the Applied Science and Technology Source Ultimate, we have the Humanity Source Ultimate, and then we've got the Sociology Source Ultimate. Even though we have or we will be talking about these five ultimate databases, we also have another two set of ultimate databases, which I will talk about at the end of the presentation, which are catered for the medical market. But in today's session, we're just going to talk about the five and I would like to just talk or drill a little bit deeper in each of these databases, just to give you a bit of more information about them. Now, let's look at the academic search database. What is the academic search database? So the academic search ultimate database is one of our largest multidiscipline database that contains full text journals. 
What do I mean multidiscipline? It means that it covers or it has content that covers various of subject areas within the academic world. Now, within this particular database, we, once again, we have peer-reviewed full-text journals. We have other content that is included, such as magazines. We have videos. I think videos is quite also a crucial point or content to have in such a database. Reason why, you know, through interactions that we've had with customers, it's commonly said that, you know, users are more responsive to visual learning, visual content. So having videos in this particular database allows users to learn in the kind of method that they prefer. Um, I spoke earlier about you know, the global exposure. So in this particular database, which is the ultimate, the, the, the academic search ultimate database, we have content which is published over um, 80 countries. Again, users are being explored, exposed to international content. So they can be able to, um, you know, have a wonderful experience and seamless experience in terms of their research. Um, I spoke about open access journals in my previous slides. So just to give you a count, in this particular database, we have just over 5,000 um, active open access journals that users have access to. Now, talking about peer-reviewed journals that I included in here. So within the Academic Search Ultimate database, one of the popular journals that is included is the science one. I must um, point out that this particular journal is exclusive to the Ultimate database. So I know some of our customers do subscribe to the Academic Search Complete or the Academic Search Premier, for example, but um, this particular popular journal is not included in those database, but is exclusive to the ultimate. So I do encourage you to upgrade to the, to the ultimate if you would like access to this particular uh, popular journal. Now I, talk, I spoke about global coverage. Um, here is just a snippet of the countries that our full text journals come from that is included within the Academic Search Ultimate database. Once again, um, it's international. Africa is also listed there. But please do not be alarmed if you see the African number lower than other countries. We do encourage you to reach out to us if you have any local content that you would like us to aggregate into our databases. We have a colleague of ours who is our, our uh, publisher relations manager who assists us in licensing local content as well as international content. So I do encourage you to reach out to your regional sales manager or account executive, you know, with whichever titles you would like to have so you can help us grow, you know, the content within Africa. All right. So here we have a slide that should just shows you a comparison of the academic search databases. So as mentioned previously, some of our customers or most of our customers are on academic search complete. But if you look at the academic search ultimate, you will see that the number of content that is provided in there is quite more than any other version that you have here. Again, you are allowing your users to have access to more content, allowing them to have the ultimate, a wonderful experience. I'm going to now tap into the business source ultimate database. What is the business source ultimate database? So this is a subject specific database. Um, what do I mean by that? So this particular database is ideal for your business school, your commerce um, faculties, for example, because the content that is provided in here is specifically related to business. It does contain active, full-text, peer-reviewed journals. But then again, it does also um, include non-journal content, which is also very vital in the business um, faculties. We have your case studies, we have your company profiles, we've got your industry reports. I will touch a little bit more on this point on my next slide. So in terms of the business reports, 
that we provide in this particular database. We work with a number of partners or providers that help us in getting high quality business reports, such as Market Line, for example, we've got Business Monitor International and many more. And then in terms of the count of videos that are included in this particular database, we have just over 100,000 of videos that um, are included in here for your users to actually go in and explore. We work with a number of reputable publishers such as your Harvard Business Publishing and many more. So the content that is provided here once again is high quality. And then in terms of the count, talking about active open access journals, we have just over a thousand of them that are included in this particular database. Now, in my previous slide, I emphasized on non-journal content. Why is this important for a business school or commerce faculty? Um, through interactions that we've had with customers, they've mentioned that, you know, within the business faculty, um, often they would give student assignments to look at a particular company and to dwell within the SWOT analysis. Out of the SWOT analysis, pick a weakness and then build a, build a solution around that particular weakness for that particular company. Now, this allows your users to be able to go into EBSCO host while experiencing and enjoying the full text peer reviewed journals. But then again, they also enjoy the non journal um, content, which they can purely go in seamlessly get the information that they need on the particular company, look at the weaknesses that are provided rather than, you know, having students going to platforms such as your Google um, and, and so many more. So this allows them to have content that is relevant to their specific subject field. Then I'm going to now touch base on the peer reviewed journals. I think peer reviewed journals with no embargo. That is also quite important. So I've just listed a few for you here to see which top popular journals are included in this particular journal. Why is this in this particular database, pardon me? Why is this particular important when it comes to no embargo? We've had students, I'm a student myself, sometimes you reach a particular journal and you want the latest um, edition, but there isn't because there is an embargo and you get frustrated because you know there is an embargo and you need the latest edition of, of that particular um, journal. So having these high top journals included in this particular database with no embargo means that your student can get relevant information of whatever they need at whatever time. Now I'm going to also just have a look at the comparison of the different business source database. Once again, we can see that in terms of the active full text journals with non-open access, we have just over 2,000. And out of the 2,000, we have 800 that come with no embargo. International coverage, I just want to highlight some of the countries that our full text content comes from. Once again, we do have international and Africa is also included. Now I'm going to tap into Applied Science and Technology Source Ultimate Database. Once again, this is also a subject specific database to the Applied Science and Technology field. It does include a hundred or a number of full text journals of which those journals that are included in this particular databases, database is cited in key subject indexes, um, looking at subjects such as technology, engineering, and many more. This is quite vital because then it allows the users to get relevant information in terms of trends or looking at innovations or ad um, advancements in terms of you know, technology, what is new in the market things like that. In terms of the count of active open um, access journals, in this particular database, we have just over 100, 800 um, journals. Just to share some of the subjects that are covered in this particular database, we have robotics, 
We have AI, which is artificial intelligence. This has been one of the topics of the years. We have other subjects such as genetics, mechanical engineering, in, um, agricultural engineering. So these are some of the subject areas that are covered in this particular database, but we do have more. Again, when we look at the comparison, um, if we do have customers that are you know, subscribing to our applied science and technology source, you can see in terms of the number of, you know, um, content that is provided in the ultimate. So we do encourage you in that if you want more content, consider upgrading to the ultimate, or if you do have a gap um, within your university that needs to cover for the applied science and technology, ultimate source would be what we would recommend for you to take. Once again, looking at the international coverage, those are some of the countries. We have Africa also included. I would like to also highlight unique um, titles in terms of journals that are included in this particular database. These titles are unique to EBSCO and will not be found in it at any other vendor. So EBSCO is the only vendor that currently uh, licenses these or has these the, um, particular journals included in our database. So if you do subscribe to this database, then you know that you are exclusive to these particular um, um, titles that your users will have access to. So with that being said, I've briefly spoken about the three databases in terms of the ultimate database. So I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Gobella, just to touch base on the other two ultimate databases. Thank you so much, um, Lebo. As Lebo mentioned, uh, I'll be talking about the last two um, ultimates that we have. The first one being Humanity Source Ultimate. Uh, Humanity Source Ultimate is um, subject specific and is designed to meet um, needs for researchers in all aspects of uh, humanities. It has a wide variety of articles, full text journals, magazines, musicals, etc. Some of the benefits that this database has it, it gives your users uh, exposure to international content. And because it is subject specific, it um, allows your users to be, to be more precise in their searches. Uh, looking at the subject um, areas that it's covering, these are some of the subject areas that it's covering, which is your art, your history, your religion, your gender studies, your philosophy, and linguistic. And these are not only the subject areas that it's covering, there's still more subject areas in this, uh, in this subject of humanities. Uh, this is just to show some of the humanities database that we have that are available at EBSCO, uh, your humanities full text, your humanities complete, your humanities source. And as co when we compare the humanities source ultimate with the other three, you can see that there's more content in humanities source ultimate, which, it, which, is, which shows that it's a good idea for uh, those that subscribe to Humanity Source to upgrade to Humanity Source Ultimate. For Humanity Source Ultimate, you can see that we're getting content from um, some of these regions. South, South uh, Saharan Africa is one of them. These are some of the top journals uh, that are included in in um, Humanity Source Ultimate, and they do not have any embargo. They will emphasize on, on how important it is for students to get access to uh, content. Sometimes you try and search for something, then you find out there's no for. With the titles that don't have a, a, no embargo, you will not uh, have a problem. Sociology Source Ultimate. Sociology Source Ultimate is one of the largest sociology databases that we have um, at EBSCO. It contains uh, peer-reviewed journals, your 
monographs, your conference papers covering uh, the social issues. And it also have uh, more than 2,700 uh, videos from top video providers like your Jenny Man, your Intelligence Squared, your MVD Entertainment Group, etc. It also has um, 592 active global open access journal. These are some of the subject areas that uh, sociology source ultimate covers. Your immigration, your poverty and wealth, your economic development, and many more. I just mentioned a few, I didn't mention all of them. And this is a comparison uh, between sociology source ultimate and uh, the other database that we have at EBSCO that covers the sociology field. As you can see, sociology source ultimate has more content as compared to uh, the SOC index with full text. So it is also uh, important to upgrade from sociology source ultimate, uh, upgrade from SOC index to sociology source ultimate. So. Uh, it, these are some of the regions that um, we got our content from. You can see that uh, we have international content and we also have some of the African content. These are some of the titles that are not included in SWOC index, but they are available in Sociology Source Ultimate. So again, this emphasizes why there is a need to upgrade from SWOC index to, to Sociology Source Ultimate. With that being said, I'll hand over to Lebu who will talk about the medical outcome. Thank you so much, Kovela. Um, when I started the presentation, I did mention that the five um, ultimate databases that we're going to present on are not the only ultimate databases that we have. So we do have the other two for the medical um, faculties or schools. So if there's anyone on the line that is interested in these two, particularly um, for the medical field, we do encourage you to contact Tian, who is our regional sales manager, and Sean Fredericks, who is our account executive, and they will gladly help you with any other information that you need pertaining these two um, ultimates. Now, we've come to the conclusion of, or the end of our presentation, and I think it's evident that, you know, the ultimate databases are quite vital and important. You know, they give exposure to more content, allowing users to be able to, you know, um, have a variety of content that they can use within their research experience. So I think it, it is only fair for me to say that the ultimate gives more or the bigger is better. So with that slogan that bigger is better, I would like to end it off by playing a small video for you. Um, because our motto is bigger is better. I'm here with my brand new iPad, brand new. Of course, you notice the official iPad, it's got the little sticker right there, you can even see it. But today, I'll be showing people why bigger is better. It's a new big tab. Hey, how's it going? Is that the new iPad? Yeah. A little small, isn't it? What do you do with it? Watch movies, play games? Uh, yeah, I watch movies, play games. Say, say, say. You want to see something with it? Yeah, sure. I'm unplug, unplug your headphones, come over here, check this out. It'd be nicer if it were bigger, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it would be, watch this. I'm going to take this out, I'm literally oh, going to roll what? this into a big tab. Because bigger is better. You ever rolled pizza dough before? Yeah. I'm gonna do this with your iPad. Watch. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna roll it up like this into a big tab. No. Oh. The brand new big tab. Check it out. No way. Where's my iPad? I'm gonna roll it. What? <laughs> <laughs> so check this out, guys. This is a game called Fruit Ninja. The resolution on these things is so amazing. You take a strawberry right out of the screen. <laughs> strawberry. The strawberry. That's how realistic the graphics are on this. We gotta use two fingers. Like it's here, strawberry, right? Take it out like that. You can't do this on an iPad, can you? That's a strawberry. Watch, take a strawberry. You can literally take a strawberry out of the screen. Ooh, another strawberry. Look, you wanna grab one out? Here's a strawberry. You grab it out right there. There's a strawberry. Grab it. There's too many for you to hold. Check this out. I'm gonna fix this for you, okay? Watch. Can I borrow this for a minute? Do one, two, three. I'm literally gonna stretch this out into a big tab. 
I'm gonna stretch this all the way into a big tab. I'm gonna stretch it all the way out. Whoa. Oh my god! You still want your iPad back? Not if I get to keep this. Keep it. This is huge! <laughs> this is how easy this is, watch. Now that is the way to watch a movie. The big tab. Bigger is better. I agree, bigger is better because with, because with the ultimate database, you literally give your users the ultimate experience within their research. With that being said, thank you to everybody that has joined us today. I'd like to hand it over to Timbelile and Dean um, just to check if there's any questions in the chat box or if there's anyone that would like to ask questions, please raise your hand and they will acknowledge you. But once again, from Kobela and myself, thank you for joining us today. Timbelite, over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lebu and Kobela. Uh, there are no questions in the chat box, but we do have a comment from Tian and he's saying, thank you for mentioning those um, medical databases. <laughs> Only a pleasure. <laughs> Okay, um, I think because there are no questions, they are saying thank you for the amazing session, and that's from um, Mayam, I think. Um, so what we're going to do is, if there are any questions that you can think of, you can still contact the team, um, anyone from the team, um, as well as Tian, um, his email was there, and Sean for the medical databases. Um, Dean, I'm going to hand over to you if you want to cover anything. Perfect. Thank you, Timelite. Um, I see that there was one question from Tina regarding um, opportunities for trials. If you do want trial access or if you would like any further information in terms of title lists or, or any, anything like that, please reach out to any of us. We're happy to today with you to set that up. So Tina, please reach out to us um, and we're happy to assist you. Um, I also see there's a comment from um, Nare saying he raised his hand. Um, Nare, have you got a question that we can assist you with? And then another question from Busi Siwe, as an institution, how can we benefit? Um, so Busi Siwe, if, if you are interested in getting a little bit more information in terms of benefits of the ultimate databases, and as I mentioned, in terms of trial access or pricing or anything like that, we're happy to also set up some one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. So we can meet with you, whoever the relevant uh, regional sales manager is or whoever the account executive is, we can set up some one-on-one -on -one time with you as well. And we can go over in a little bit more detail which are the relevant databases for you and, and how that can benefit you and be of assistance going forward. Um. I've unmuted Busi Siwe. She may have a question. Her hand is up. Perfect. Thank you. Busi Siwe, you can speak. Okay. Busi Siwe, are you there? Okay, there's feedback. We're going to give her time. Um, I'm going to speak. I'm going to unmute another speaker. Nare, you can speak. Good morning, EBSCO host, uh, staff members. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes, you. Nare. Yes, Nare. Uh, yes, Dean. It's good for me to finally have a chance to chat to you face-to-face -face online. <laughs> I have two questions uh, for you. The first question is about the presentation today. The ultimate experience that you talked about, how does it differ from my current subscription to EBSCO host? So, so um, Nari, just yeah. if, do you want to do you want me to answer that question, or do you want to pose both of your questions first? Yeah, let me uh, put to you another question, Dean. 
how do we encourage students to always prioritize EBSCO host uh, literature when they, they do their assessments. I know, Dean, previously we talked about incorporating Google Scholar into EBSCO host database, <clears throat> but I would like to find out from you guys, <clears throat> apart from integrating Google Scholar because it comes with codes, what are the suggestions for librarians or information officers to ensure that uh, students really <clears throat> appreciate and, and understand the value of <clears throat> utilizing peer-reviewed uh, literature on EBSCO. You know, Dean, I work for an academic institute, so I'm quite familiar with the literature that they use, <clears throat> you know, to complete their assessment, but I'm not going to go into detail. But my two questions, let me summarize. What's the difference between the Ultimate database and my current subscription to you? And how can one <clears throat> uh, promote the use of EBSCO host uh, at an institution of high learning? Thank you. Perfect. Thanks for the questions, Nari. So um, I'm going to answer them in the, in the sort of order that you asked. So the first question in terms of what is the difference, um, the major difference is you're not going to see a difference in terms of the end user experience. So your users are familiar with using EBSCOhost. That's going to be the same experience. The difference they're going to see now is in terms of the additional content. So there's going to be more content. There's going to be more content that has no embargo. So they're going to get immediate access to a lot more relevant content and new content. So that's one of the big differences. And then, you know, in, in a database like the Business Source Ultimate, there's also additional content that's non-journal content. So you're gonna get all those SWOT analyses, the market reports, the country profiles, all of that information you're gonna get along with it. So the short answer is that you're going to get a lot more content and a lot more um, sort of uh, recent content. So those are the two big differences. And we, we're happy to also set up some time to, to go through that information with you in more detail. And we can do that, you know, if, if anyone would like to see that, we can also do that on one-on-one -on -one meetings happily. In terms of your second question, creating awareness, there's always a couple of options and it always differs from institution to institution. So I'm sure many people that are on this call this morning have had this experience or this question at, at some point um, in your interaction with EBSCO and various electronic resources. But the, the biggest thing is, is always going to be training, you know, and making sure that we're educating, first of all, the academic staff um, and the library staff, and then that needs to feed down towards the students. So um, if there is a way that we can assist you with training and awareness, we're happy to meet and discuss that with you and see how we can assist. In terms of the other two items that are always very important to consider is how are your students accessing the resources and how are they using them? So big things to consider in this aspect are EBSCO's um, we've recently re-released our mobile app. So a lot of students and in, the, in some of the academic institutions where we've seen the app used, we've seen a big spike in the usage within the app. So um, by downloading and using that app, that's a, a great way to get your students using the resources from their smart device, which is um, you know, the primary way that they, they're interacting. And the other thing is, is if any of you are using a learning management system, such as Moodle, or Blackboard or Canvas, we can also assist you with integrating EBSCOhost into your learning management system. And this really helps because a lot of your users will be working in that learning management system already. And to now have their resources within that LMS really does assist them in, in being aware that those resources are available and also accessing them. So Nari, I hope that's assisted and, and we can also 
as I mentioned, I'm happy to set up some time. I can come and meet with you or we can meet online and, and discuss all of these options in more detail as well. All right, Dean, thanks for the response. If I'm interested in the ultimate uh, product or service, does it imply that access to additional literature that comes with it uh, is subject to additional cost? It, it is an additional cost. So this would so each of these would be an upgrade on various databases. So the academic search ultimate would be an upgrade from either if you're on academic search premier or academic search complete. And that would apply to, to all of the, the various options is they are all upgrades on existing databases to offer you more content. So we're happy to, to look at pricing um, and with all of the institutions, um, pricing would, would depend on you know, current subscriptions and that. So we won't be able to give pricing immediately, but whoever is your regional sales manager will happily um, discuss pricing and trials and all of this information with you um, at, a, at a later stage. Thank you, thank you uh, very much uh, for your uh, support. I think Dean, I will uh, engage you uh, closer to the renewal uh, uh, period. And uh, thanks for the presentation. I appreciate that. Thank you for your questions, Nare. And then I see, sorry, two last quick questions that I'm going to address to Melita before we um, proceed. So I see your uh, query regarding cost implications. So what we will do is we will look at some costing um, and we'll make sure to reach out to you just so that we can discuss that for you. And then Tenna, in terms of setting up an appointment, I will reach out to you after this um, session and we can set up an appointment for us to, to discuss all of this in more detail at a time that suits you. Right, so think that that was the last of the questions or comments that I could see. Um, Sorry, I have unmuted um, Olebi Leme. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly. I think he has a question for you as well. And then in the meantime, I'm going to put Dean's email address um, in the chat and then you can all copy it from there. Thank you, Timelike. <clears throat> Oh, thank you, Lebo and Dean. Actually, uh, I'm with Busisiwe. Uh, we are an insti a small institution and we are willing to be part of ESO. So we wanted you know, to understand how you could uh, help us. But as uh, Dean has already indicated to Busisiwe that you will make an appointment so that we discuss face-to-face uh, -face, uh, or through virtual, then there is no problem. I think we'll take it from there. That is perfect, Olivia. Thank you very much for your, your comments and thank you for joining us this morning. It was lovely to have you all joining us. And I'll definitely reach out to, to you after the session um, so that we can set up that time. Um, what we will do is, Tim Elithev, Oh, excuse me, we'll also save this presentation um, and Timothy can correct me if I'm wrong, but we do add it onto YouTube so that it is available for you to, to review and watch at a later stage. Correct. Perfect. Once again, thank you everyone. Um, before we do go, we did mention um, there would be a, a lucky draw prize. So I'm going to hand over to Annika and we're going to try and do a, uh, a lucky draw to see who is the winner of that prize. So Annika, are you ready? I'm ready. Good morning, everybody. And thank you to all the PSCO staff for their contributions and our customers for the questions. So winning has never been this easy, or so they say. Um, so who will the lucky person be today? Let's see. I am going to spin the wheel. Pumla is our lucky winner. Um, Pumla, either myself or 
uh, Tim Belichley will reach out to you. The price is a nice take a lot voucher and then a six month subscription to either the business or academic ebook collection. Um, well done and congratulations. Congratulations to um, Pumla. We've come to the end of the session. Thank you so much once again for joining. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you, Dean, and thank you, Annika. Our next session is next week. Please be on the lookout for the invite. If you haven't registered, we're going to send out a reminder and you can register again. Um, that's it for this week. Thank you so much. Have a good day.